Hello guys, welcome back. Um, so as promised, based on last video, um, I'm going to create um, an operator, a custom airflow operator. Uh, what it, what we basically need is uh, to create a custom operator. In my case, will be to retrieve x number of uh, tweets uh, based on hashtag that I want. So this is a basically an, a Python. Um, Python program that I created, so which I'm using Panda also. What it does, it 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 query uh, Twitter API and retrieve um, the number of tweets that I limit here. In your case, maybe it will be different. For example, you would you would unload uh, the, the data from Redshift or from RDS or from Microsoft Azure Sizes DB. So any any use case will be different, or you will have a use case that you query. API continuously and you want to retrieve and save the data in some way where you will pick that up and load it in a database. So I created this structure so we convert what we have in Python to um, basically Airflow custom operator. So let me quickly run this um, that's working. So let's see Python tweets. So it just goes query uh, Twitter and um, return like 10 number of tweets based on hashtag and date and time and also as as you saw here i limited the number of columns that i need from the api so that can be in your use case could be different so i'm returning user time and tweets so i'll turn this into the airflow operator um if you watch my last video i created a custom image locally so for this to work uh, you need to have a custom image or you can use you can watch my previous video how to install custom um, Python packages inside your docker image um, I'm not going through that I will link the video here um, so let's uh, let me quickly show you the um, docker file that I have um, so you get an idea of maybe how to do that so if I go to my builds here so what i did basically install um the tweet tweepy is an is a python package that let you uh, interact with uh twitter api so basically what i did i added this one and built the image locally and my airflow is running so if i go to localhost so basically the same thing um nothing changed here um this will be an example of what we're going to build so let me quickly show you guys so this is a custom airflow pair if i trigger this day it will return like the same output if i check the logs you will basically see the same output but i'm also saving this into the file which we use case could be different in your in your part so let's go back here and let's get one thing uh, I want to mention is that you need an API key and um, and you have to have a app register in Twitter, which will give you the the API key, access key, and token. And um, basically, you need four things: you need API key, API key secret, access token, and secret token. Um, you can basically it's free, so you just go there and register and get your token. Um, let's go start building this. Um, to build this, I'm going to create a new directory inside the DAC file. So I'll create a new directory called my custom app, my custom operator. So inside that, I'll create a Python file. I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say, uh, my read tweets so once I do that um, I need a couple of things from Airflow what I need from Airflow is the base operator because I'm extending the base operator uh, to create you my custom operator so basically that's how you do it you have to extend the base operator um, then add your customization on top of that. So let's import that from airflow.models import base 
base operator. So this is basically what we need from Airflow. Also, I need um, a package from Python. Because I'll read the configuration files. So I need config parser where I I'm saving my access keys and tokens and everything from Twitter in a separate file, so I'm not directly coding it into the file into the operator itself. Uh, so I need that. Then Tweepy, the one that I install, and Panda to manipulate the data. So this is where we extend the um, the base operator class. So let's say I'm gonna call this read. Let's call it read. Hashtag tweet. And I'm probably gonna pause the base operator. Now, once we do that inside the class, we, we initialize um, our constructor. So let's initialize that to self. And then here is uh, what we need to expect from the when you use it, when you create a DAG, what we expect from um, the DAG to to be passed to this custom operator so it can uh, return you the result. So what I need is the hashtag hashtag. Then I also need date since. Um, what I also want my operator to have the capabilities to limit the number of tweets. Also. I would like to give the file name so it can save the file, the output of the tweets, or not only display it but also output that. Um, another thing, what I need is the columns. So I want this to be flexible. I can pass it like in, in one DAG, I could just need a date and time, on the other one, I might need more like column names. So that's the reason I'm passing that. What also you need is, I'll just, for for the sake of why I want to, I also want to pass the arguments and keyword arguments. So I want to pass keywords and arguments. The reason I do that is because I want this to be flexible enough so I can Whatever column I don't mention here, I can pass it and it will return me the result. Then we pass everything to the self. Hashtag to hashtag, self, date sense, self, limits. So basically, we will repeat on um, file name. We also need column names. Then if we pass, we need column names. We also need, I think that's that's it. Um, we will need keywords that I can pass that later. Um, now what we need to do is um, start with super, super, shift initialize keyword. We need the super here. for our arguments and keywords. So let's review that. So yeah, basically that's what I need. Now the second function is where you execute that. So this is where all the core functionality of your operator will reside. So any functionality that you want to have in your operator, you can, you can basically paste it here. Like, it could be as easy as just passing just copying and pasting what you have in your Python file um, with small changes, like um, specifically what your operator needs to expect. So these can be passed as a parameters here um, to the self. So let's uh, create the executor. And we need the context. So first thing first, uh, if you go to back to this file, uh, we need um, these details. 
So basically, I need this and also the configuration file. So let's copy that. Um, make sure we're in the right place. Yeah. So if you can see that the only difference is that I'm uh, reading file from this location, which is basically my Docker. So when you create a Docker image, and it, you have to pass the full path. So otherwise it will not be able to find the file. So I'm reading the same thing from here. Uh, the next thing is authentication. So we need to authenticate um, with the with access key and token that we got from Twitter. So this is that. Um, and where the things need to change is um, passing the, the parameters. So for hashtag, I want to create a variable hashtag. Hashtag, um, and I want this to come from the DAG itself. So I'll, I'll, I'll set this to a self. What did I name it? Yeah self dot hashtag so this will come from here when this when the DAG will pass these parameters um other thing is limits so i want to limit the number of tweets because when you're using free version on twitter um there's a limit um not necessarily 10 tweets but there's a limit you have to consider that um, otherwise they will block your access so I need to pass the limit I also need to pass date since so which means basically filter uh, the tweets that are from December or uh, the latest tweets so I'll say so the date since what I need also is the columns Columns can push this off dot columns. I think that's pretty much I also need this is not necessarily will be passed by by the op operator, but I need to combine hashtag with the date so I can search the tweets. So the my I define a variable and I what I do what I will do is hashtag Oh, this one. Hashtag uh, concatenate that with dates. Um, I need also what I need is um data array where I can store the tweets when I look through them. Uh, that's basically it. So these columns are these variables are important because i'm I would, like the operator that we created expect these values to be passed to it to be passed to that so in order for that to make make it more dynamic so we don't have to rewrite this functionality every single time that we need for different tweet different hashtags so we just need to pass this to um that operator and it will change um the output for you so that's the whole idea. Um, what I also n want to do is now loop through the tweets. So this is what my... Sorry, let me copy this. Um, because I tested this before recording, so I want to make sure everything works fine. Yeah, so I need what I need is uh, loop through the cursor um, and search the tweets based on hashtag and the language and the limits that I will pass to the tweets. Then I will also search inside those tags and append the results of the tweets. So then I loop through this with four loops and append the results into the into the very um, array that I created. 
the last thing is I just convert that to the data frame so I get the data frame up and convert everything the output to the data frame so that I can save the file so here also you see the file name is dynamic so whenever I I create that DAG I can pass the file name based on the hashtag and everything that I will pass to the DAG so once you so that's how it looks so before recording I create a new DAG that utilize this operator so this DAG you can see I create before recording it's as a basic structure DAG uh, the only difference is I'm importing this custom operator that we created so once you do that um, then you define your DAG default arguments which is basically standard and every DAG and this is where you define your DAG um, you can name it whatever you feel like um, also once you do that then this is how we use those parameters that we set for example we create a limit so here we pass like the limit here so i can say simply now I would like i would like to return 100 tweets um then you can change the hashtag so i'm using fifa world cup so since it's um world cups so i'm trying to get tweets from the hashtag FIFA 2022 um, I'm also passing the file name what file I want to give the output so I will say 100 tweets FIFA 2022 hashtag so this will be the file name um, then we pass the date so I want only from December anything December um, I would also like to limit the number of columns. Then, um, once you do that, so we can save that and um, let's go check it again. Like, um, if you can see, I don't have any file name that's something like this. Once we run the DAG, we should be able to have a file saved here as a CSV. And then we can open and check that. And also we can check the output on the, in the logs. So let's go and check that on the, the. So this is the, the deck. Um, let me go back here. Tweets. Okay, okay, that's not about there. So let's go to this uh, deck that we have. I ran this multiple times. Out, I was testing this. Uh, but let's see, run this and see the output. So it looks like it's running and it's completed. It's pretty fast because um, I'm not returning that many tweets. So if you go to the logs, we see the number of tweets returned. 